Hello everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi to everyone who's out there watching me today. So I'll just introduce myself. My name is Jess. And remember, we usually start with a little warm up for you. So you might remember the penguin race. We did it two weeks ago. Now I'll let you know what the aim of it is again. So pretend we're all in a group, all of us being penguins. And we need to prepare, so we need to put on our warm hats, our warm socks and shoes, and put on our jackets as well to get ready. Now, when you are running the race, instead of actually using your legs, I want you to use your hands and tap them onto your thighs, like what I'm doing. So we're all gathered together in a line because this race we're all doing it at the same time. So ready, set, go. Let's do this. We're going to have to come up against a few obstacles. A bridge is coming, so when the bridge is about to come along to you, you need to duck underneath, okay? The bridge is coming, duck. And we're going downhill. Be careful. Going downhill again. Now we're going uphill. Oh, it's a steady climb. Going uphill again. Oh, it's hard work. The queen is just around the corner. Give her a wave. The queen is right there. Let's wait for her and keep running. And we're running past the crowd. Yeah, good work. Again, running past the crowd. Yeah. Waving to the queen again. And the bridge. Remember the duck. We're going back downhill. We're almost at the finish line. We're going past the crowd again. The finish line is just about there and we're done. Congratulations, one and all. Fabulous teamwork. Now, you can all get back into your seats again. Now, this workshop is going to be focused on work. We have two presentations and there's also an activity that you can do with your role models in this session. First off, we have Sophia Lee from Sensewide. She will be talking to you off camera because we'll have a sign language interpreter on screen. And I'd like to hand over to Sophia. Here she is. Hello everyone. Some of you may remember me from last year. I did a presentation at BCD. And it's a similar presentation, similar information for you. So, if you're ready to have a refresh of that information, I'll start now. Great. Hello everyone, um, I'll just start. So, just quick brief information about who I am, who we are as a Sensewide. So, I'm a senior employment consultant at Sensewide. Um, I've been working there for about seven years, but all together at Big Dev since 2009. And here we have another employment consultant with me today. Um, her name's Shannon. Um, she's been with us since last year and she's loving her job. Sensewide's been established since 1992 and we're the specialist disability employment service provider for the sensory loss participants. Um, we're the employment division of Big Deaf, Victorian Deaf Society. And we have nine employment consultants, including myself, and two ongoing support consultants. And out of those 11 consultants, six of them are, are, six of them are Auslan users. All together, including the admin and the managers, we have a team of 17 staff at Sensewide. So what do we do? We provide pre-employment support on-the-job support when someone's 
found a job um, and also ongoing support at the workplace when they're employed. Um, across Melbourne, we have six offices, um, main offices in the city, um, in Frankston, Greensboro, Epping, Preston, and Sunshine. I work across uh, three different offices, the city, Frankston, and Sunshine. So if anyone wants to come and see me, you'll be able to find me those there <laughs> in those offices. Okay, just quick information about what we do generally. So when we meet a participant, we support with resume, cover letter writing, as well as job applications. We also help with the course enrolments and liaising with um, disability support officers at TAFEs or universities. Also, we, you know, um, train and provide the training for um, participants and, and ensuring that they understand the professional boundaries and etiquette. Um, also, we'll talk about um, ideas and possible solutions if there are any issues for job seeking or if you've found work and you're working and there are issues at workplace, your employment consultant will be, will be able to assist you to resolve the issues. Um, when you're job seeking, we also support, um, or we also reverse market heavily for the participants. So we'll go out to um, shops and apply for jobs together. Um, yeah, so that sort of marketing, call calling, warm calling, all sorts of marketing um, tools we use to promote our participants. Um, we also support our job seekers at interview skill training ensuring that they're ready for the interviews, job interviews. We also attend the job interviews together. Um, if you're feeling nervous, we'll come with you. Um, also, our, what we do also, I'm gonna cover this today, but we apply for employment assistance fund for all of our participants. So today, the main focus is about EVE. What's EVE? It's, it's Employment Assistance Fund that all of our deaf, hard of hearing students should be aware that there's this fantastic support services available through government. So what's EF? So EF helps people with disability and mental health condition by providing financial assistance to purchase a range of work-related modifications and services for, for people who are about to start a job or people who are currently working. Um, as well as those people who require the support, communication support to find work and prepare for work. So in if um, Osman interpreting is main part of it, um, so we can access um, up to $6,000 for Auslan interpreting at workplace. We can also access funding for job interviews for interpreting. Um, I can explain a bit more if anyone's interested for more information. Um, also, if covers the adaptive equipment for the workplace and communication devices. For example, um, if someone needs support at workplace, um, okay, the, a good example um, for a deaf person who's working at a warehouse factory environment, um, we'll, the first thing we'll do um, is the safety assessment for the workplace, that ensuring the deaf person is safe um, to work in the environment where they provide all the supports and communication aids are provided. So in case of smoke, I mean fire, um, emergency, um, evacuations required, then you know people might have to go look for deaf person, okay, where is the person? Rather than that, we'll provide the pager so deaf person can carry the pager or wear it, and there'll be a button connected to the, um, the actual factory's smoke mm -hmm. alarm system. So, the deaf person can be alerted um, automatically 
without the hassle of finding the person or yeah, having to do that. So that's for the safety purpose. And also there are other devices that we can assist. Um, yeah, we do workplace assessments and etc. And also if covers deaf awareness training, hearing awareness training, all sorts of diversity awareness trainings, including the mental health first aid training as well at workplace. So who can apply for EVE? Um, anyone who's looking for work who are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, so individuals as well as the employers who's employed people with um, hearing loss. Also Disability Employment Services or Job Services Australia. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about today was the benefit of registering with a DES provider, Disability Employment Services provider. Um, because there are a lot of components and evidence that you have to provide to be able to be to be able to be eligible for the service um, when you get a job. Um, your employment consultant will be able to help you from um, the very beginning of your um, employment to the end. So we'll hold your hand and we'll take you to the journey together. So I highly recommend that you contact your local DEDS providers for the support when you're ready to look for work. Um, so talking about the process of EVE, um, Employment Assistant Fund, um, there are a lot of components that you need to understand. I'm just gonna quickly go through that um, summary of it. So the first one is you identify your needs. So what sort of workplace modification is required at workplace? Um, is that a you know workplace assistance or Auslan assistance? So you work out what your needs are. If you're not sure, your employment consultant will be able to assist you with that. Um, in sh make sure you read the guidelines um, before you're applying, um, if you're applying for it individually. Um, you can see the link on the PowerPoint. Job Access Advisor then will arrange for a workplace assessor to conduct a workplace modification assessment to determine the most appropriate assistance. So if you're registered with a DES provider, like Sensewide, um, your consultant will be able to act on behalf of the workplace assessor and be able to provide the workplace modification assessment on their behalf. So this process will be skipped if you're registered with a DES provider. Job access will then approve or decline, depends on your application and your supporting documents. When it's approved, um, you will then purchase the assistance, whether it's um, device or interpreting. Once your EVE application has been approved, whoever submitted the application is responsible for purchasing the device, or purchasing the approved items. Um, the EVE um, is a reimbursed scheme, so all purchases will be fully reimbursed after you're submitting the receipts. So, this provider or your employment consultant will be able to do everything for you. So you won't have to worry about this process if you're registered with a provider. That's all about, that's all I have for um, if information. Now I'm just going to quickly go through um, your employee's entitlement. Um, so just pretty much what it means as an employee is you have your rights um, to be receiving your wage or salary depending on your hours and status of your employment. So employees, employees get different entitlements depending on the type of employment. So what sort of type, what type of employment are they out there? You can have full-time, part-time or casual employment. Depends on the employer, um, you might be offered as a permanent position or fixed 
or contract work. Um, and also hours of work is also important and pay rate. Leaving, leave entitlement for full-time and part-time employees will also include annual leave, sick leave, carers leave and all sorts of leaves available for those. For a casual employment, annual leave, sick leave, carers leave won't be included. Um, awards and wage. Um, I thought it would be important for you guys to know this information also to understand that in Australia we are supported by Fair Work Ombudsman so everyone has rights to um, receive the award rate of payment for what they do. So an employee's minimum pay rate can come from an, on an award, <laughs> enterprise agreement or other registered agreement or the minimum, a uh, national minimum wage, which is about $16.50 for adults. Um, employees have to be paid the right pay rate for all the hours they worked, including the time they spent in training, in team meetings, opening and closing the business. It's their rights. If you don't get paid for those, um, go and see someone, <laughs> a fair work ombudsman, you should. Um, I just wanted to quickly touch base on apprenticeships and traineeship, apprenticeship and traineeship, um, because it's directly related to you guys. So you might be already doing some sort of school-based um, apprenticeships as well. So just quickly, um, because we're short with time, um, Apprenticeship is basically you're working um, for full-time and part-time, but also being trained. So at the end of the apprenticeship, you will be qualified in the field that you're, um, you've been studying and trained at. So you can become an independent, um, either a business owner or um, qualified sole trader and etc. Um, after three years of your apprenticeship or 12 month of traineeship. Um, so as you can see, there are school-based apprenticeships available. So uh, an Australian school-based apprenticeship arrangement combines paid employment as an apprentice or trainee, off-the-job vocational training and also secondary school training is also part of it. So. If anyone's interested in more information, you can access further information on Australian Apprenticeships website. It's a government website. Or feel free to send me an email. I've just included a um, quick summary of the comparison of the award rate for the apprenticeship as well as the general employment. I'm not gonna go through this, but I want you to have a look. Um, if you have any further questions, you can contact me. Um, I've also included the examples of current jobs um, at apprenticeship centres available. Um, so have a look at that. And if anyone's interested for more information, contact me on um, info at sensewhite.com.au or sophiaL at sensewhite.com.au. Thank you. Hope it wasn't too boring. Thanks, guys. I'd really like to say thank you very much, Sophia. I hope that you've um, enjoyed that information and please remember that you can ask us questions at any time. You can either email or SMS. And I'd like to move on to the next pre presentation. We have Maxine Buxton. She'll be talking about the VRI service that we have here, the Video Relay Interpreting Service. So, come on board, Maxine.
Hi everybody, my name is Maxine Buxton. And that's my name sign. I work here at Big Tech under Osman Connections. I work in the department of the CLS. CLS means Community and Language Services. So we have a variety of projects that we're working on and providing different services out to the community for young deaf people. Now the photo that you can see is my manager and their manager. Karen Thistlequaite and also Brent Phillips. Karen is the manager for operations of interpreting services and a few other areas as well. Brent Phillips is the general manager of CLS. And in the middle we have a lovely lady called Della Goswell. She's an interpreter from New South Wales, from Sydney, and she recently arrived in Melbourne to present and train various interpreters about working in court and what the proceedings are. And there were some of the interpreters who were hooked up through the VRI service, which is similar to what we're doing today. And it's really good to have the names and the faces of the people and the good connections that you can link into. Now I've got a photo to show you what the room that we are working in looks like. It looks exactly like this. We have computers, some laptops all set up, we have various electrical cords, somebody controlling the video camera for the live streaming, whether it be you're at home or at school, if you were wondering what it looks like in the room that we're working from today, there's a quick snapshot. So a bit of background from me. I've told you before my name is Maxine, and I've been working as an interpreter for approximately 14 years. Predominantly in Victoria, but I have done a few jobs around Australia. Recently, I started working at Big Def as a permanent employee and I look after the VRI service. VRI means Video Remote Interpreting. So the interpreter would not be present in the room with you. They're being beamed in through a screen or, for example, Skype. Now, with CLS, the department, there's a variety of projects we're working on. We have sign language video productions, where we make videos in Auslan for deaf community members. And sometimes we make information to ensure that deaf community members, regardless of their age, can access the information. Sometimes Businesses or uh, government departments will provide us with a script to do with uh, the legal system and we will translate that into Auslan and create videos to be broadcast to the deaf community to make sure that you are aware of the most recent information, how you can access that information in Auslan. And that's one area that we work in. Information and events. Recently we had the Gaslight Festival. We worked with them a few years ago and recently as well, also at the Christmas Rally, we are present. My department provides Auslan and DAT, D-A-T. That means Deaf Awareness Training. So we provide various workshops. You may be interested to know that um, for in the future when you are working or you are employed and you need to have your management team and other staff be involved in deaf awareness training. And we also, of course, provide interpreters. I'll just refer to my notes. Now, similar to what I was saying before, is we have sign language video productions all 
Sorry. The phone is... Sorry, we just have an interruption for a moment. wait and make sure that we have connection with the captioner again. Hold on just one moment. My presentation. I apologise if there's any, any information that you have missed out on. Apologies for that. Now, at the start, I should have mentioned that we'll be talking about interpreters, BRI interpreters. So if you're at home or at school and you have a question or there's something you would like to know about interpreting, please SMS now. And then I will receive your questions throughout the presentation and if there are any questions, I will do my best to respond as soon as I can at the end of the presentation. Okay, so now is the perfect opportunity for you to send in those questions. All right, back on track. Here's an example of the sign language video operations. And the producer is Sasha. And that's her photo. With Michael in the photo as well. As you can see, there's one example of a video being made for the VRI service. Just to give you a snapshot of what it is that we do. So VicDev has provided many community events, such as the, candle, uh, the Gaslight Festival. And recently we had Drosana Levitsky Gray visit us in Melbourne. And as you can see, it's part of your generation, people who enjoy taking selfies. So that's an example of what the DAT or DAT looks like. DAT BA. So DAT means deaf awareness training. So if you gain employment and you're working with other staff members all who are hearing and you're the only deaf person and those hearing people don't know how to communicate with you or it's feeling a little bit uncomfortable maybe they would even like to learn some sign or learn a variety of ways to communicate with you, then we can bring in a deaf worker who will provide the deaf awareness training. Talking about deaf community, deaf culture, how to gain your attention, what are the best ways to communicate with you. So this is what it means, that. Pretend you would like DAT and Auslan training, so DAT BA. BA means basic Auslan. So it means a deaf person would visit your workplace, talk about deaf community and culture and so forth, and also train staff members in basic Auslan. Maybe finger spelling, maybe a hi, how are you, and some specific concepts that are linked to your workplace. Maybe if you're working in a bakery, different ways of describing what types of bread you'll be using. Uh, if you're in an office, maybe your staff members need to know about uh, various equipment such as photocopying, faxes and so forth. So that service is the DAT VA. And that's a free service under the EAF. So pretend you've applied for the EAF and you've received that $6,000 worth and you've been approved, then you can book a deaf worker, a deaf person who will come in and train your workplace. So your boss would pay for that service and then the EAF would cover the, the costs. So really, a 
essentially it's a free suit. Before the debt, we had a lot of dead people in workplaces feeling rather uncomfortable and not sure of where to go and who to talk to. And since the debt has been established, we found that things have gone quite smoothly for deaf members of the community who are working in various employment. So, my department, the CLS, provide various services and, of course, interpreting. The Vic Deaf Interpreting Service is called Auslan Connections. Before, it was called VACE, then they had a name change and they became SLC, and now they've changed their name again to Auslan Connections. So here's the team, maybe you can email or SMS. And if you receive a reply from somebody, now you know the name to the face. First, on the left we have Jane, then we have Erica, Karen, Matt, and a You know, we have Auslan interpreters in a variety of situations. Could be private situations, medical, hospital, workplace as well. So, have you seen this sign before? This symbol? That means the symbol is an interpreter will be present. It's worth remembering what this symbol means because if you arrive at an appointment or if you're going somewhere and this symbol is being displayed then you know that you are able to access interpreting services. And here's another example for you. Example, if in the future you may need to go to the hospital or visit a doctor, your GP, you can employ an interpreter via NAPS. And that is a free service for you to access. However, in hospitals, of course they must provide interpreters, but it's a different system to how NAPS works. So the hospital themselves will be doing the bookings for interpreters. Of course they should be providing interpreters. But now that you're at school and you're almost at the age of 18, 19, turning into an adult, and your parents have been looking after you since day dot, then soon enough you'll be gone, you'll be cutting the cord to your family and going out into the world on your own, it is perfect and worth remembering that you need to stand up for what it is that you want. If you want an interpreter, if you want a note taker, if you need somebody to talk slowly and clearly so that you can understand them more easily, now is the perfect time to develop your confidence so that you can stand up for what it is that you need so that you can communicate effectively. also provide deafblind interpreting as well, tactile interpreting. And interpreters in the workplace. It's really interesting to talk about that here today because we are talking about the transition to work. Auslan Connections can provide interpreters. We can provide on-site interpreters, that means they're physically in the room with you, or we can provide interpreters through the VRI service. The information in regards to the EAF, uh, Sophia has covered most of that, but if you would like more information, please contact either SenseWide or VicDef and we will be happy to answer your questions. If you have been approved with the EAF, 
Crossline Connections can help you manage your money, how to book interpreters, and let you know how much you have left in, in the kitty for the year. So once you've been approved, please contact us and we can help you out with sourcing interpreters for you. We can provide interpreters, live captioning, and DAP training as well. And this is an example of what it looks like when using live captioning. So the VRI service that we have here in Victoria, we're very lucky because we have received funding from the government, from the state government, to establish and educate community in regards to VRI. So this new service was established last year in April and has been going strong since. So we've just had our first birthday and there are different ways that we can provide VRI interpreting. Previously, it used to only be through a video conferencing centre. And then someone would be connected via a video linker. And that was the only way that we could access VRI services. But now we have a variety of ways and we are more flexible. We can use Skype. If you have a Skype app or if there's an appointment that you're going to and if somebody has an iPad or a computer that is connected to the internet, then you can access Skype. We can also do video conferencing. For example, governments have very sophisticated equipment that we can use. And the third way that we can use VRI is with a particular program called Life Science. It's a free program that you can download onto your iPad, onto your tablet, or your computer. And then you can connect directly to the VRI service. This is how we use Skype. This is video conferencing. And here we have somebody using an iPad or a laptop, which is also possible. Also, maybe you're unaware, but recently we've had a huge change in Centrelink. So in the future, if you are waiting in line to access your Centrelink appointment, to fill out forms, or you want to meet a Centrelink worker in regards to looking for work, and you get there and there's no interpreter, well now Centrelink have changed and they have stated that they will provide interpreters through the VRI service. And they will provide this throughout Australia. So I think it's a fantastic change that all citizens of Australia can access interpreters through the VRI service when they go to a Centrelink appointment. So that program has been established by Auslan Connections up in Queensland under Dev Services Queensland. So the DSQ and VicDev, of course we work in partnership, means that we can provide Auslan Connected Interpreting through, via, through the VRI service at Centrelink. So it's worthwhile remembering that tidbit of information. Another thing in regards to VRI, maybe you have been approved of your AAF funding and you're paying for interpreting services, that can become quite costly. So, for example, if you're working in the country and there are no interpreters that live locally, this means you would have to employ an interpreter from, from the city to travel all the way up to where you are, and that can really become quite expensive. But, please remember that you can access the VRI service and that could potentially be cheaper for you. 
Therefore, that means your EAF funding can last longer. So there I can be very accessible for you when you're using the EAF funds. And also we can be a little bit more flexible. If you have an appointment, say, for tomorrow and you can't find an interpreter to be on site with you, then you can access the VRI service. So, I think that's enough from me. I've given you a lot of information and I hope I haven't overwhelmed you. I wonder if we have any questions from the SMS service. Yes, we have. Okay, we have two questions. Within this service, does this involve the NDIS or is that separate? Great, well, thank you so much for that question. So, FitDev, we have a contract with the NDIS. So that means that we are able to provide ND through the NDIS services. So if you receive NDIS funding or a package, you can purchase whatever it is that you are needing, but you need to have agreed what services it is that you'll be accessing. You have to register. Sorry. Uh, you have to register, well, the organisations have to register with the NDIS before you can access those services. So yes, FitDev is a provider under the NDIS, so yes, you can access our services. Now I have a second part to the question. With EAF, let's say um, it's, it's a personal life thing, so the NDIS, they will have workshops, let's say in two weeks time. This will inform more of you, but the second one, what, different, what is the difference between NABs and Auslan Connections when booking sign language interpreters? Great question. So, NAVS services the whole of Australia. And they get their funding from the government. It's federal funding. And then NAVS work on providing interpreting services. NAVs only provide interpreters for private medical appointments. Like going to the GP, maybe you have a physio or a psychologist appointment, that sort of thing. A dietitian. So those private services, the small medical appointments. If you happen to be involved in a car accident or you need to be taken to hospital, that's a separate entity. You cannot access interpreters under the NAB scheme. But hospitals must provide interpreters and you won't be paying for that service. But if you need an interpreter at a hospital, then you would need to book under the deaf. I know it is, um, it can be quite confusing. And just one thing I'd like you to remember, as, as a deaf community member, you have the right to access interpreters at all times. Sorry, can I just get that paper over there? I've got some more information for you. It is worth for you to keep this in your wallet or somewhere close by. if you're involved in an emergency or if you need to talk to the police or you've been sent off to the hospital and you're finding it really difficult to communicate with people, then you can show them this card and they will realise that they need to provide an interpreter for you. Okay, I have one more question. And they say, what if I need VRI access but we don't have internet access? You'll have to shed a tear. 
really to use BRI, it is impossible without good internet access. Look, if you have a slow access, as the NBN is currently on its way out throughout Australia, before we had trial sites, but now there are some country areas that can access the NBN, and that does work, but I'm really sorry. Unfortunately, if you do not have internet access, then you can't access the BRI service. But if you are wanting to be involved in a trial or a session to see if it will work for you, then please feel free to contact me. If you have Wi-Fi and it fails, maybe you have a dongle and it works really well. If you have an iPad with a SIM card, that might work as well. So it is worth testing that out and seeing how well you go with that. And also, someone has given me some information that many Centrelink offices have Wi-Fi in the office. So if you are really needing to talk to someone or you would like to access the VRI service, then you can go to your, to your <laughs> local uh, Centrelink or Maccas and use their Wi-Fi. Thank you. Those tips are great, I think, for uh, our audience. Now, thank you very much for the questions. Now we're going to handball it over to your mentors on site for around about 20 minutes, and then we'll come back to uh, finish everything off. I just want to thank Maxine uh, for talking about the interpreting service, the BRI, and Big Def. I think it's great to have all this information. And you can also um, have a look at all of this information that's been mentioned on any of your iPads or phones or mobile devices. Hello and welcome back. Hope everything's going well so far. I've received two more questions that have come in. One of them is, what is a dongle? Well, Maxine can show you. Okay, I was telling you about how you can connect to the internet in a variety of ways to use BRI or anything else that you would need to access the internet for. On the iPad, you can have a SIM card, so that means you're already connected to the internet. Another way, if you're at home or if you're working at your organisation, you have a modem that you can use and that would be connected to the internet via Wi-Fi. Another way is to use a dongle. You may or may not know what a dongle is. It's a little bit similar to a modem. But the difference is the dongle, you can just pop it in your pocket and take it anywhere with you. There's quite a few varieties of dongle that you can use. You can, um, it's like a USB, you know, like a memory stick. It looks a little bit like that and you can just plug it into your computer whenever you need it. Or there's a few different devices like these ones. Both of those that I've just shown you are called dongles. They're very similar to the modem that you would use at home. And they act as a Wi-Fi signal. And then your device, or your phone, or your computer, an iPad even, can connect into this one dongle. So I've just given you a few examples as to how you can connect to the internet to utilize the VRI service. But I have to tell you, unfortunately, Using your phone's hotspot is not good enough quality. Of course, you can download, but uploading, it's not so strong, so you wouldn't be able to access VRI through your phone's hotspot. Okay, so if you need to, check out a dongle. And the second question that we have, if I'm a student and I'm studying in a vet course and I need to bring an interpreter in, will that be covered by the EAF? Well, the answer is no, unfortunately. For a job interview, yes. For a trial at work, yes. And the contract that you sign would say if you're working more than eight hours a week over a 13 week period, then yes, you can access the EAF funding. If you believe it's your right to have access to an interpreter through your vet training, then I would suggest lobbying for that and making sure that you can 
get an interpreter and see what happens and what the outcomes of that are. But thank you very much. Thank you, team, interpreters, captioning. Thank you all very much for being here today. I encourage you to fill out your survey and I look forward to seeing you next week when we talk about independent living. Okay, have a great afternoon. See you all.